Hello everyone, and today we're going to answer the question, which is better, PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X? Now, these consoles have been out for just over a year now, and, you know, I've had, they've had the PS5 since launch, I had the Xbox Series X since September of last year, and, you know, we've had their time, spent a bit of time with both consoles, so let's answer the question, shall we? Which is better? Which one should you buy in 2022? A PS5 or a Series X? So let's get on with that right now. Right, so we'll start with the hardware, uh, shall we? Or the hardware specifications. And uh, we're going to use a point scoring system where we're just going to award points for whichever one is better. Uh, now, the Series X on paper does have a better GPU. Um, again, it's rated at 12 teraflops as opposed to the PS5's rated at 10 teraflops. This doesn't really produce much of a difference uh, in actual gaming uh, when it comes to actual gameplay. You do get higher resolutions generally out of the Series X. Uh, generally average resolution is higher but again frame rates are limited to 30 fps or 60 fps if we take dying light 2 for example if you run it in resolution mode the xbox series x gets a higher resolution but it's still 30 fps though um, and the performance mode and the ray tracing mode they're still both the same uh, 1080p uh, performance mode gets you 60 and uh, 30 for the ray tracing mode, but most games are like that. You tend to find that the Series X tends to run a higher average resolution, but it doesn't really affect the games in terms of performance. Again, some games are 120, but they tend to be fixed at certain frame rates. You very rarely get an unlocked frame rate because, again, most consoles are run on TVs, which tend to be 60 or 120 hertz. So, uh, PlayStation 5 does have like a 40 FPS mode for Ratchet and Clank in the 120 Hz mode, which does make sense um, if you think about it. 40 does divide, about 4 divides by 12 evenly, so again, you can get nice even frame pacing. Um, so that is an interesting option there. Uh, the PS5 does have the advantage in terms of its SSD being slightly faster, but again, this is quite insignificant. It does mean that load times are 2-3 to three seconds on average. Uh, faster, should we say, not slower, faster than the Series X, but it doesn't make a huge difference. These are just things, they're just kind of bullet points on a spreadsheet. In practical terms, most games tend to be, most third party games tend to run the same graphics settings anyway. Games like Control, for example, uh, Control Ultimate Edition runs a uh, graphical parity between the two consoles. Um, again, you do get a slightly higher frame rate because the frame rate is unlocked in uh, in uh, photo mode, but photo mode isn't gameplay, so they tend to be locked to either 30 or 60 FPS, depending if you want ray tracing, it'll be 30 FPS, if you don't have ray tracing, it'll be 60 FPS in control. They're both 1440p and low settings. Uh, again, this is just fairly typical across games uh, for it. So we are going, we're calling this a draw. Uh, one point each, we'll call it, um, for them. Series X, more powerful GPU, uh, PS5 has a faster SSD, but in the end, it's an advantage to neither of them, really. Right, so let's move on to one of the most important aspects, uh, and that's the games. Uh, the PS5 does have, tend to have more exclusive next-gen experiences. Uh, than the Xbox at the moment, although the Xbox did get a few. You've got Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5 um, were added uh, recently. Uh, the Xbox does have an advantage in the fact that it supports more games, you could argue. Um, again, backwards compatibility um, is a big deal on the Xbox. Every single generation of Xbox uh, it has games that are supported. Not every original Xbox or Xbox 360 game is supported by the Series X, but um, quite a few of them are, and certainly the PlayStation 2, even PlayStation 2 games are playable on the Xbox Series X if you have developer mode, and GameCube games as well. Um, so the list of games that it officially supports are pretty good, and unofficially is even bigger. There, the PS5 does have support, uh, backwards compatible support for uh, most PS4 games, 
Um, it would be nice to see PS2 games and PS1 games supported. PS3 might be difficult to emulate. Again, we've done a video recently on PS3 emulation on the PC, and it's in a pretty good place right now. But if anyone could do a PS3 emulator, it is Sony, uh, certainly. And if they could get it to run on PS5, that would be, you know, would again add to it. I think Game Pass as well is another big advantage for the Xbox. It just provides better value, you know, having a are paying what 10.99 a month and getting access to uh, quite a quite a big ever growing list of games. Uh, now I'm not including acquisitions in this uh, video. We're not even going to look at them because uh, that's for the future. Uh, really, Microsoft's active uh, acquisition anyway of Activision Blizzard. Um, not counted because it's not available. We're reviewing the consoles as they stand today. So that acquisition doesn't go through until next year. So who knows what the future will provide. We don't know, so we're not we're discrediting that uh, right now. Uh, same with Sony's acquisition of Bungie as well. Again, it's not produced anything yet. So again, we're just reviewing it as is today. Um, so we're not including them in there. So PlayStation 5, again, it does support. It would be nice to have a PS2 emulator and a PS1 emulator. It's te definitely te technically capable. Uh, again, the hardware is very similar to that of the Series X, and the Series X can emulate PS2 games uh, with developer mode, so there's no reason why the PlayStation 5 shouldn't be able to emulate PS2 games. If it was like the PlayStation 3, and you could just, the PlayStation 3 you could just put in your disc, your PS1 disc, and it would just play in a PlayStation 1 emulator. The PS2 didn't rely on emulation, it actually had the Emotion Engine chip uh, in the early PS5s, um, so I had actual hardware, but it would be nice if you could pop a PS2 disc into your PS5 and play it via an emulator. I think that would really expand the games available on PS5. But once again, having said that as well, also uh, should be mentioned that the Xbox Series X, when it runs, some back compact games have FPS boost. Uh, enabled, which is nice. Um, again, it uses a Direct3D hack to get get it to run at either 60 or 120 FPS. So that gives it a further advantage in terms of back compat there. Uh, but overall, we're going to call this one another draw. I know, boring, right? Uh, another draw because again, PS5, more next-gen experiences there than the Series X, uh, but the Series X has a bigger game library. So again, uh, we can't really comment on the exclusives. The quality of games generally is subjective. Like if you like Ratchet and Clank, you're going to buy a PS5. If you like Halo Infinite, you're going to buy a, a Series X. So that is subjective. The quality of games are purely looking at this for a quantity of point of view. And it's we're going to give it a draw. Um, I think, you know, again, more next-gen PS5, but Xbox Series X supports more games. Okay, so we're moving on to upgradability, and really there's only one thing that you can upgrade uh, on the PS5 and the Series X, and that's generally the storage. Um, capacity. Again, both use Gen 4 SSDs. Sony's we've established is faster. It is soldered on to the motherboard. Uh, the Xbox does use an NVMe drive uh, in there. It's one of the shorter NVMe drives, uh, which can't be upgraded directly, um, but you can upgrade the storage on both. Now, both will support USB drives. Uh, you can plug in a USB, um, USB mechanical hard drive or a USB SSD. The only thing that these can be used for though, they can only be used for backwards compatible games. They can't be used for current gen games because they're built with the SSD in mind. And again, they can't guarantee speeds uh, from the USB. Uh, so both of them can. So you can only play Xbox One, Xbox 360, original Xbox games on the Series X. Uh, and on the PS5, you can only play PS4 games. You can copy games, PS5 and Series X games, over to the SSD for archive purposes, but you cannot run them. So if you just don't want to download the game, but you just want to free up space on the internal drive, you can copy it over to a USB drive, but it will not run. You have to copy it back. 
to the internal drive. Uh, now both have an internal upgrade solution or an external in the Xbox Series X's case. Uh, the Series X uses proprietary uh, proprietary Seagate drive, uh, which are very expensive, and I, I don't honestly don't like this approach. The PS5 is going to win this. The PS5 gets the point uh, because it uses a bog standard M.2 um, slot, so it, it will work with any PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. Uh, or most of them at least. I think up to 4 terabytes is what its limitations are. It has to have a minimum read speed, but generally all the Gen 4 ones tend to meet that minimum read speed. Um, there's very few that don't. Uh, so this is a, an advantage. It is technically maybe slightly more difficult to install uh, than the the Xbox one because the Xbox is just a plug and play. It just plugs into the back. There's like a little slot. It's like a little memory card. Um, you can get the little Seagate, but they're only made by Seagate, that's the problem. They're exclusive and proprietary, which keeps prices high, whereas you can use like a Samsung 980 Pro, uh, you could use a WD SN850, you can use a Seagate Fire CUDA, you can use any of these NVMe, and there's quite a lot more um, Gen 4 NVMe SSDs out there. And again, most of these will all work um, generally, as long as they're under 4 terabytes, because that is the only limitation in memory. Although a 4 terabyte NVMe SSD will cost more than the console, so I don't think there's many people going to buy uh, 4 terabyte SSDs or higher, really. So, I mean, that is the advantage there. There is some minor disassembly required. You have to take the bottom panel off, and there's a couple of screws you have to undo. Uh, and you do have to install it into the NVMe slot. Uh, but other than that, it's a fairly simple job, really. The PS4 had that as well, um, and the PS3. There was, again, minor disassembly required and a few screws to, if you wanted to upgrade the hard drive. But overall, it's not a difficult process uh, to upgrade, and it is worth doing adding the second uh, SSD in there. And again, Gen 4 SSDs will always get cheaper. That's the thing. There's competition there, and we've seen prices drop dramatically. So it is more consumer-friendly, Sony's approach, than Microsoft. So that's why the PS5 wins this one. Right, let's move on to last, uh, but probably, yeah, and probably least is multimedia functionality. Because again, these consoles, uh, they can be used as media centers as well. Um, and they're both pretty similar in that sense. Uh, both will support up to UHD Blu-rays. Uh, obviously, the PS5 Digital won't, um, but there is a disc version of the PS5. All Series Xs have a disc drive. And again, they all support UHD Blu-rays. Um, which is good um, there if you want to use physical media. And again, if you want to go for streaming apps, most are supported, all the major ones, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney+, Plus, etc. They are all supported by the PS5 and the Series X, and they all run fine. Again, you can get UHD content on them. Uh, again, you have to pay extra on Netflix to get 4K. But yeah, they will do 4K output. Again, they're HDMI 2.1 devices, so they can do 4K at 120 hertz. Uh, not that you're gonna get net, not that you're gonna get like streaming at 4K 120. It'll be 4K at 60 hertz. So uh, they are definitely capable. And again, depending on your internet, they will run fine. Uh, the Xbox, however, wins this as it has the digital storefront, which I quite like actually. I've used uh, the Xbox Store. Uh, for buying especially UHD stuff like you can buy UHD movies and they're fairly cheap I should point out in the UK a UHD Blu-ray is about £25 for a UHD Blu-ray um, Quite expensive you can get the same UHD movie on the Xbox store digitally for £17.99 And I just prefer that it's just more convenient it is a lot cheaper uh, I bought, um, and they also go on sale because I bought the Spider-Man trilogy, the Sam Raimi one with Tobey Maguire. I bought that, the trilogy for that, UHD, $9.99, three movies for $9.99 in UHD, which I think is pretty reasonable. I mean, if you were to buy that uh, on the Blu-ray, it would probably cost you about 40 or £50. Pounds. So, again, that's why I'm giving the Xbox the point. PlayStation did have a digital storefront that sold movies and TV shows, but it shut down. And they were only ever available in 1080p, so only HD there. Um, so, but yeah, I do like the Xbox Store. It's not a big win for the Xbox, but you know, it's it's nice to have the choice there. 
And again, I like the digital storefront. I think they do have good prices. They do have good movies. You can rent stuff that's in the cinema for fifteen ninety nine, which is just a waste of money. I wouldn't pay that to rent it. 16 quid to rent stuff is ridiculous. But then that's the same everywhere. You can still buy movies on the PS5, I should point out, but you have to buy them through a third-party store like Amazon Prime Video, for example. You do have to buy them through that. Um, so that is, that is a disadvantage that you can't buy them direct from Sony. But I do like the Xbox store in terms of digital media. Um, I think the Xbox is just a slightly better option there. Right, so let's get down to it. The winner and the best next-gen console that you can buy is the Xbox Series S, as all these features that the PS5 and Series X have are pointless, as you can't buy them. They're very difficult to buy. The Series S is in stock, so it kind of wins by default, really. Uh, in other words, it's quite an anticlimactic end to this video so yeah the best <laughs> the best console that you can buy is the one that's available there you go that's that's you know that's a sad state of the world in 2022 now that you know you have to you have to just win by default there so there you go um to be fair though the series s can do everything that the series x can do it just does it to a lower resolution generally uh, again all the game pass games the backwards compatibility is all there the fps boost is all there as well um there and it can play the next gen games albeit at lower resolutions and generally lower frame rates some have ray tracing missing uh, as well but you know the series s will do most of that it can't do can't do um it doesn't have a disk drive which may be a disadvantage if you've got a large collection of you know xbox and xbox 360 and xbox one games on disc you will have to buy them digitally um as you can't just put the disc in so the series x has the advantage there but another other that rather the series x isn't available um so that is a big disadvantage there you go i was gonna say the pc was the winner but again um pc part the uh, gpus are just too expensive at the moment so yeah series s is the best next gen experience that you can actually buy for a reasonable amount of money uh, but anyway that is all for this video sorry for the anticlimactic ending and we'll see you again soon and goodbye